of the taxpayer cost of divorce and unborn childbearing. Now, people say, well, I don't want to pay so much in taxes. Well, you know what, people out there, you are subsidizing divorce and childbearing and unwed childbearing. You just are not being told. Every time that there's a divorce, consider that your tax bill is going up. You're actually subsidizing this. And this was a, rep uh, a report done by Benjamin Scafidi. He's an economist out of um, the J. Whitney Bunting School of Business at Georgia College and State University. This is in 2008. He went through the, he gave all of his assumptions on how he came to this figure, but he said divorce and unwed childbearing cost taxpayers not the people, taxpayers, at least $112 billion a year. At least, every single year. And he said, really, the figure is probably much higher, maybe like $165 billion. The cost of a Hurricane Harvey every single year is what you're paying as a taxpayer. Over 10 years, between $1.1 and $1.6 trillion is what you're paying to subsidize divorce and unwed childbearing. If you aren't concerned about this, I'm not sure why. I mean, imagine having that, you know, wh why am I having to pay for somebody else's divorce and their unwed children, childbearing? But this is what's happening. It's affecting your pocketbook. And the reality is as well, the study was on in 2008. This is now 2019. I don't know how much it has increased since then, but I've got to say that it's gone up to, to more than that. In Texas, uh, in the year 2008, it was approximately a little bit under $4 billion. Now, now that would be a, 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 a purported uh, tangible cost. Intangible costs in lives you can't, can't, cannot be counted. Down. Absolutely. We're talking about just the, the taxpayer burden. Right. We are not talking about the intangibles. And you know, when I went through divorce, um, my, I, I mean, I was at work and I had some projects and I just said, I, fortunately I had a place that, that really helped me out. I said, listen, I can't do this right now. You know, it's, it's tearing me up. I'm trying to to keep my family together. Again, I didn't know I had no defense. I, I could not believe how unjust it was. But I mean, and, and nobody thought it should have happened. Nobody. But yet at the same time, I'm going through this stuff, and, and I mean, it's, it's putting me into turmoil because I'm looking and I'm saying, this is what's gonna happen to my family. And I'll tell you, Mike, you know, my ex-wife filed for divorce within two weeks, my daughter was pregnant. You don't tell me that there's no cause and effect there. That, that, that example I gave you some, some time ago at the beginning of the show about the judge who was the, the joined the circus? Yes. He moved the lady out, moved the man out, moved the lady in, yeah. moved out. I, I, I went to talk to that judge and I said, I told him, I said, I just, he got mad at me. Yeah. And I just told him, I said, you know, I'm, it was in six months, that, that teenage girl would be pregnant, yeah. and then the little boy, and then young man will have somebody pregnant. Yeah. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, yeah, and here, you know, the uh, yeah, Saturday I was downtown in Austin, and you know, there was the, the March for Life, and I know these people may have different views on this, but you know, the idea about abortion, um, what I tell people who are pro-life is that if you are pro-life, you need to be for this repeal of unilateral no-fault divorce, because when you have children of divorce, especially daughters of divorce, they are more susceptible more to getting to, more pregnant, pregnant to and, more, pregnancies. and also more likely to end up with abortions because uh -huh. they don't have the same support system. And many times the parents are trying to figure out things. The children are on their own. If you want to reduce abortion, reduce divorce. If you want to reduce poverty, reduce divorce. If you want to reduce gang activity, reduce divorce. If you want to reduce high school dropouts, reduce divorce. If you, you know, any, you name it. So there are a number of problems that can be fixed if we fix the family. Absolutely, absolutely. And these, the, the two bills that Matthew Cross is sponsoring, they are just mild bills. They aren't extreme. Extreme is to say that one person who's entered into a marriage willingly with another person can at any time or no time, any time for any reason, say, I want out and that's it. And there's no basis for it and the, the destruction of families um, that, and, and that accompanies it, that is unreasonable that we would say for any reason, for no reason, one person can make an allegation because maybe she's met somebody new or he's met somebody new. You know, you can file for divorce based on adultery. You don't have to. And I know of many people, maybe you do too, that have gone through those times of infidelity and they've come out stronger. You know, they've gone through those times and they said, you know, we were able to forgive each other. And as you know, in marriage, you will always have instances where there is 
a conflict that you have to work through. So you have, when you take for better or for worse, or maybe infidelity is the worst. <laughs> but you know what? If you, and I'm not saying that you have to, and I'm not saying that you should have to be married to a chronicle, a chronic serial adulterer or something like that, or somebody who's beating you. But for the most part, many divorces are needless. And that first study that I told you about the second chance of the proposal to reduce unnecessary divorce, that's what they said. At least 40% of the divorces are unnecessary. I read a, fam I read a judge who said, in her opinion, from which and she presented over 4,000 divorces, she said at least 50% of the people who filed for the divorce didn't even want it. They just wanted to help strengthen the marriage. They ended up divorced. And she said the state bears responsibility for this. So, so that, 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 that to me, that, that puts more of, a, of the uh, of a burden on judges to be uh, perhaps a bit more circumspect about how they approach it. Absolutely. And what I hear too often, though, is judges taking umbrage behind the Texas Family Code. Well, we have to grant the divorce. Well, no, you don't have to, but they, they think that they do. And, and, and I'm saying if, if, based on no evidence, you are going to destroy a family, you are not acting in a judicial capacity. You should be able to say, wait a minute, um, who says that there is no chance of reconciliation? You know, the, the judge should say immediately, this is my opinion, if I were the judge, say, you know what, I'm not going to grant you the divorce because, number one, I am representing the state. And as the state, I have an interest in seeing your family stay together. Because if you split up, as the state and, and, and taxpayers in the state are going to be taking some of, are going to be taking the responsibility for some of the stuff that you should be doing. I'm going to say, no, you know what, you need to go back and fix it. Try to fix it anyway. And, uh, and that would be the bare minimum to say, okay, you know what, um, we're not going to do this. You need to prove your case. Why? Tell me why you should be the divorce. <laughs> but the judges say, oh, okay, for any reason, for no reason, we'll get you the divorce. Yeah, it's just, it's just um, I just see, to me, the biggest concern for me would be, would be the damage done to the children. Right. They, they can't. They can't. They are not really represented. And they you aren't. Have, you have the husband and the wife, and they have lawyers. Yeah. In some instances, you have an ad litem, but then that ad litem had had no children to pass on to. Right. You know, this was something. Last Monday, I was at a meeting with the Attorney General, uh, Attorney General Ken Paxton, and it was a presentation on human trafficking. So I knew he was going to be speaking, and I went to his website and I looked at the human trafficking. They had a great video out there, by the way. But what he said, what he said is that all children are um, are at risk of being trafficked, yeah. but there are some things that create that make them more vulnerable. And I looked through his thing, and I said, what I see is this. All of these things that make children more vulnerable to human trafficking are the same things that you find in children of divorce. What is the state doing? And what is your office doing to help address these issues? You know, I told him, Mike, he said, we don't have the resources. They only give me attorneys. And this is where I'm saying, okay, this isn't, I, I'm not saying that we can necessarily stop human trafficking, because humans can be trafficked from any type of a background family. But if we can strengthen the family, which is what you're talking about, yeah. how can we strengthen the family? We get an opportunity to strengthen our children. We get to reduce children that are vulnerable to human trafficking just by strengthening the family. And every other, like I said, every other social malady as well. Uh -huh. I think that uh, this, this thing about fam family, on, and when I went to law school, yeah, well, I was more, more interested in taxes and corporations and stuff. I thought family law was that. I thought criminal law was kind of sexy with family law was that. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. But uh, I, I've since rethought that in the last two weeks. Yeah. I said, well, you know what the family really do? What, 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 what's, really, what's really most important? You are. But I've also heard among some attorneys saying that as far as in their profession, the family law attorneys are looked at like the yeah. scum of the yeah, profession. It's, <laughs> it's like you're at the bottom of the barrel. Yeah. But you profit by destroying families. Yeah. It's just, yeah. But Jeff, I. It's about time to wrap up here. Man. Okay. And uh, but I want to thank you for being on the show. If you ever near again on a Monday evening, 
You're always welcome back. Well, I appreciate it so much. Thanks for giving me the opportunity here. Um, this was wonderful. Thank you for whoever's listening and watching. Thank you so much. Mike, again, thank you for everything. I have to, have to give a special thank you to Ron DeFinney for, for putting us in contact with us when we have this show. And um, she sweated us, sweated us about a little bit, but everything is okay. <laughs> everything turned out okay. Thanks so much. I thank appreciate you. it. I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. God bless you. God bless you.